Susan. Right. What are you doing? I'm demosaking the floor. You mean for the programming project that's like due in a couple hours? Yeah. Have you even picked an algorithm yet? It's a new abrasive one. It's called Smash It Susan. Do you even have a color image to use? I do now. Digital color images like this one here contain three channels or layers, red, green, and blue. When displayed simultaneously, we sense color. It is important to understand that at every pixel location in this image, there is a unique set of red, green, and blue values. Most of today's digital cameras, however, only contain one imaging sensor. They cannot natively collect red, green, and blue information at every pixel location. We combat this problem with a color filter array, a series of individual color filters covering each pixel location. Now, each pixel can collect either red, green, or blue information. Sensors equipped with a Bayer color filter array will cover half of the sensor with green filters, a quarter of it with red filters, and the remaining quarter with blue filters, as shown. This widely used method only captures raw color data for a third of the image. We use demosaicing in order to make a best estimate to fill in the remaining two-thirds of the color data. There are dozens of algorithms for demosaicing a color image, and here we will be discussing color demosaicing using variants of color differences. The first step in demosaicing an image with this method is to intelligently calculate all of the missing green information. Half of the green information is missing from the image where either red or blue information was otherwise captured. First, horizontal and vertical gradients are determined in a 5x5 testing window in order to determine if there is a dominant edge imaged in the horizontal or vertical direction. An intermediate green image is interpolated with these patterns if there is a dominant vertical edge, or these patterns if there is a dominant horizontal edge. If the horizontal or vertical gradients in this window are greater than a given threshold value, an edge has been detected, and the green channel can be interpolated at these locations. The testing window is then expanded to a 9x9 region and uses the equation shown to calculate variance, which is a metric to measure the spread of a set of numbers. Equations for the horizontal, vertical, and diagonal variance are shown, where the little d corresponds to a difference between the measured data and the intermediate green channel that was just interpolated. We now have three variance metrics at each location in the image and can choose one of these three interpolation schemes depending on which variance metric is smallest. For the remaining green interpolations, we use these schemes if the horizontal variance is the least, these if the vertical variance is the least, and these if the diagonal variance is the least. The red and blue channels are not interpolated as precisely as the green channel, as their contribution to the overall sharpness of the image is significantly less than that of the green channel. At each given pixel, it may only be possible to interpolate the red or blue bands in one of these four ways, and we cannot be as flexible in our interpolation due to the nature of the color filter array. Due to this limitation, we rely on the previously demosaiced green channel. Lastly, red components must be interpolated at blue locations and vice versa. In this scenario, we are relying not only on the surrounding diagonal red or blue pixels, but also the interpolated green channel at these locations, just as we did before. This generated test image was masked with an artificial biofilter array and run through the algorithm. It is important to note that a single sensor camera could not normally be capable of producing such an image. Zippering artifacts are prominent in neighboring uniform areas, but they do not occur at every color along a smooth gradient. This algorithm performs quite well with high frequency information, only introducing edge artifacts at the end of high frequency regions. These single pixel regions are subject to interpolation with neighboring areas and are usually quite susceptible to artifacting. It is important to note that these artifacts consist mostly of combinations of red or blue. This indicates that the algorithm for interpreting the green channel is very successful. Looking at the green channel alone, very few artifacts are detectable. In real scenes observed at reasonable distances, artifacts are barely visible and are not distracting from image content. When examined more closely, however, some slant edges do show signs of zippering. The image's discoloration is due to the fact that this algorithm only demosaics an image and does not apply any sort of color correction scheme. Overall, this algorithm performed very satisfactorily. For numerical analysis, this edge mask was created and the peak signal-to-noise ratios were computed for the edges and in each of the channels of the image, as edges are where demosaicing algorithms often struggle. A peak signal-to-noise ratio greater than 30 is considered satisfactory, so the algorithm numerically performed well. It is logical that the green channel had the highest peak signal-to-noise ratio, as its interpolation was more meticulously calculated. Subjectively, an examination of the red and blue interpolation windows show that this algorithm may benefit from a larger or different interpolation window for these channels.